Hello everybody, this is Lori Anderson, contributor with FreedomOutpost.com and co-host for Resurrect the Republic Dirty Uncle Sam Radio. I want to bring to your attention an amazing uh, show that Sheriff David Clark uh, did about the siege in Burns, Oregon and about the, the uh, Hammonds themselves. I am very thankful for Sheriff David Clark. He is very uh, much a people's sheriff. He speaks out on behalf of all the people, the whole of the people. It doesn't matter if they're Democrat or Republican. And the reason that I want to point this out, many people do not understand that Sheriff David Clark is a Democrat. And the reason and only reason that I point this out is because, just like I have said on so many videos, this is not about Democrat or Republican. This is not about any form of no matter what side of the fence you are on on any of the topics. It doesn't matter whether you're a Christian or a non-Christian. This affects the whole of the people. He speaks out against the abuses of the Bureau of Land Management, the federal government overreach, and how they have been abusing people and need to be abolished. And he is right. And I want to thank him for his courage. I want to thank him for his stand. I want to thank him for being constitutional. I want to thank him for being one of the few that have refused to bow to tyranny against the whole of the people. I want to share with you this specific radio show. Now, I did try to record this radio show for you so that it could be completely on the YouTube. It did not turn out well. You would not have been able to understand it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the radio show link in the description box below. Please go there to the description box, follow the link, and listen to the entire show. It is a blessing that we have constitutional sheriffs standing up. It is a blessing that he has done his research to find out what really started everything in Oregon. And it is a blessing that he realizes that the whole of the people need to stand together or we're going to fall. You know, when a redress of grievances is not listened to or adhered to, when the federal government is allowed to assassinate an individual and try to assassinate the other individuals in a vehicle, and you can say what you want, it was an assassination. Why do I say that? First of all, the Federal Bureau of Investigation doesn't do traffic stops, so don't hand me this mess about a traffic stop. When there was approximately at least 20 vehicles on site and there were snipers already set and staged. You don't have snipers at traffic stops. Stop with the illusions and stop buying into the propaganda. Because when you do, you then become your own worst enemy. The assassination of Lavoy Finnicum was actually intended to be a lot more than just LaVoy, and it is my firm belief that God put his hand in there and said, no, you're not going to assassinate all these people because my message will get out. And when you, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, Oregon State Police, and whomever else was on site that was involved in the assassination of this man, you will answer. You will not only answer to God, you will answer to the people. You shine your light upon a hill, and it cannot be hidden. Lefoy Fenecum's light was not hidden. It was open. It was peaceful. People keep wondering why he ran. Shots were fired. He knew he was going to be killed, and the people within that vehicle were also his responsibility for safety. But why did he keep running to try to go the way that he went? Well, other than the meeting, in the next county over that he had planned, he knew that the sheriff of the next county would stop them if he could reach them. 
make no mistake, if you try to call that a traffic stop, then you are agreeing that you yourself are okay with going through a quote-unquote traffic stop like that. And anybody who sees that knows it is an ambush and an assassination. There's no excuse. You're making excuses and you're pandering to the government being allowed to assassinate our citizens without charge or trial. They wanted to stop the message that was getting out there and all you did, thank you. Because, you know, just as the Lord says, all things work together for good to them that love the Lord. Yes, we are saddened by the assassination of Lavoie Fenecum. But just as always throughout history, when Satan thinks that he's going to snuff out a message by assassinating a person, what happens? The message gets stronger. And it has. They wanted to stop them from speaking to approximately 400 ranchers in the, in the next county. They're scared that that message is going to spread, and it already has. You can't stop that. And you know, the amazing thing with me is these people touting that uh, even Fox News, Buffalo is just a traffic stop. Well, let's see you go through one of those traffic stops, dear. But we told them they'd be safe if they stayed on the refuge. Well, I'm sorry, my First Amendment does not just cover my freedom of speech. It also covers my freedom of assembly. Mine and yours. You have a right to assemble with whomever you wish to assemble with. You have a right to redress a grievances. And when the Corrupt government officials all the way from Harney County on up to Washington, D.C. refuse to listen to the redress of grievances. Do not tell me that the patriots were extreme. People who were patriots and, and are patriots, and I say were because one of the greatest patriots of our time has been assassinated. And sadly, other pretend patriots want to claim why well, he asked for it. Why? Because he spoke out. He exercised his First Amendment right to speak out. He exercised his First Amendment right for the freedom of assembly. He exercised his First Amendment right for redress of grievances, and the government refused. The only ones lawless here is the federal government, the Hardy County government agents, and the pretend sheriff. I say pretend because he is not a constitutional sheriff. Sheriff Ward was never elected. Sheriff Ward is a paid-off pundit, and he's a scared little boy. And the reason I say he's a scared little boy is because he was, if he was truly constitutional, and if somebody tried to pay him off, if he was a man, he'd tell them where to stick that payoff. If he was truly a constitutional sheriff, he'd have kicked the feds out of there from the get-go. He would have never let them enter his county. And he already knows this. He knows he has the jurisdiction. So don't try to uh, cry and, and complain that, well, he's only been in there for three months. Well, you know what? You shouldn't have took the job if you don't know what your job is. I know children who are approximately 10 years old that would have took a firmer stand and stood up for the people more than this corrupt sheriff ward. He rubs elbows with the also non-elected Rasty, who is not only a judge, but a county commissioner. Hold the tangled web you weave and you will, you will answer. Each night when you look yourself in the face in a mirror, those spirits will haunt you. You will relive it in your dreams. 
you will be tormented by the demons in which you have entertained. And unless you reach out for forgiveness from Jesus Christ himself, and you repent of your sins, baptized in Jesus' name and receive the Holy Ghost, God help you. You may want to act like you're 10 foot tall and bulletproof to the world, but the truth is you can run from everybody else but yourself. And you will always be everywhere that you go. Until those same federal people who gave the orders decide that you are no longer worthy to be their employee and they decide to assassinate you in the same way. All oh, but that you didn't think about, did you? You didn't think about that maybe, just maybe after you did that, that they're going to target you because you are now a threat to them. Why are you a threat to them? You're a threat to them because now there is a witness. And you know the government can't have loose ends. Ah, oh, but you fight for the people that are in your employee. Your employers will protect you. Make no mistake, they will be the same ones that hunt you down like a dog. They will be the same ones because you were involved in a conspiracy. You were involved in the ambush and you were involved in the assassination of a man and they cannot, they cannot have those witnesses. Ah, you don't have to fear the Patriot. You're targeted now by your own government in which you thought was your friend. So as you try to use the money in which the American people have given to you and entrusted to you for the weapons of war, the bullets that you used were funded by the American people. Your toys that you play with are all ours. We paid for them. We pay your paycheck and yet you think you're going to bite the hand that feeds you and you are delusional. Just as Stalin and Hitler and Mao, your own ones that you have fed, the beast that you have followed is coming after you and will. And then you will cry, not me, I'll say nothing. Ah, oh, but they won't care. Nor will they care to target your own families because you made it okay. You did that. You allowed yourselves to be used by a corrupt federal government that laughs in your face as you are their puppet on a string. And you try to mock the patriots that, oh, even though you torment us through your illegal, unlawful actions, we still stand for your individual rights. We still stand for the right for you to be life and liberty in the pursuit of happiness, but yet, you didn't believe due process was needed. You believed you were sending a message. You thought that your message of the assassination of Lavoie Fenecum and the attempted assassination of all the individuals that were in that white truck that day, 
would send a message that if you speak out against our corruption, if you pull out our corruption, and if you speak out against us and you dare, oh, that we will assassinate you, hoping that your message would stem strong and true and that it would intimidate and fear so many people and instill that tyranny that the boot is on your neck. Oh, your hope was that it would silence all. Your hope is that you would stomp out the fire of liberty. Ah, oh, but what you do not remember is where the Spirit of the Lord is. There is liberty. And God did not instill in us a spirit of fear. For we fear not man who can harm our body. We fear God who can take our soul. So remember as you stare at yourself in the mirror and you punch that mirror because you can no longer look at yourself in the face. You've made your choice. And yes, until you take your dying breath, there is an opportunity for you to turn from your wicked ways. But if you do not, you think it's hell on earth, you have seen nothing. And it does not matter whether you believe in the Lord or you don't. Because he does believe in you. And whether you like it or not, There is a heaven and there is a hell. And I hope that you don't pass away before you realize that. Because then it will be too late. You know, I had an atheist once ask me, If you're living for the Lord, what are you going to do if when you pass away you find out there's no heaven or hell? I said, then I will be none the worse. But on the same token, what are you going to do believing there is no heaven or hell and you wake up and find out there is? So I will leave you with that commentary. Please check the description box below for this phenomenal, phenomenal message from a constitutional sheriff of whom I have a lot of respect for because he is for the whole of the people. God bless you, Semper Fidelis. Remain strong in prayer for each individual in our union. For all of those in Burns, Oregon, the Patriots, as well as the ones who are driven by the enemy. For at least we not forget <clears throat> that when we pray for our enemy, hearts can be changed and lives can, souls can be saved. And if they choose to keep a blind eye, that's fine. But when they do, it heaps coals of fire upon their head. And that is the word of God. And the word of God never goes forth void. For there is power. God bless you and good night.